Okay, what up ladies and gents, it's your favorite Asian robot right here, hopefully your favorite official content creator for Versus Enin. And today, we are going to go through Hotfix 1.12, alright? Uh, I'm also going to talk about the current event in the game and all that kind of other stuff. But basically, the devs have decided to make some sweeping changes in this uh, particular update. And the changes are all positive, so no need to worry on that. There are no nerfs that you have to be concerned that you have to be concerned about. And in fact, the only nerfs that have been applied are to certain enemies. So if you're excited to hear about that, and of course the buffs that we are receiving, then please read on because we are going to go through it together. All right. Don't forget to register me as your favorite official content creator as well. Link is in the video description. Let's walk through this. Let's walk through this together. All right. <laughs> My mouth does not want to move today. Okay. First and foremost, um, let's go through the content improvements. This patch was actually deployed yesterday. It was a bit later than normal. And normally I cover the patch notes on the same day. But in this particular case, there wasn't an option to do that because, like I said, the patch occurred later during the day. And the patch notes also came out later. So I'm covering it today instead. <clears throat> in terms of content, they have removed certain dungeon penalties that appear in the invasion game mode. All right, the bullet cost plus one is gone. Uh, the firearm attack when using roll being lessened every time you roll. Okay, that's gone. When using grappling hook, skill power uh, is reduced. That's gone. When using a skill, movement speed is reduced. That's gone. When aiming, incoming damage modifier is increased. That's gone. Okay, these penalties, which were considered extremely annoying, are no longer present in invasion content. So, do take note of that. Okay. The HP and MP orbs that appear in intercept battles have been buffed so they now restore more hp for hp orbs it's uh gone from 20 percent up to 25 percent and for the mp orbs it's gone from 13 percent up to 16 percent so this will help you guys out in the intercept battles basically they want the intercept battles to feel a little more cohesive and a little more fun rather than a struggle for hp and mp okay they've lowered the difficulty of the normal and hard mode dead bride um Basically, they've oh, they've also detailed the actual changes, so they didn't just lower the HP and defense values. No, that didn't happen this time. What they've actually done is they haven't touched her HP and defense values, but what they have done is that they've decreased the frequency of her teleport when she's frenzied. They've decreased the range of snowstorm, um, and reduced the <clears throat> and reduced the overall damage of it. They've also decreased the part HP of her amplifier, which should make it easier to break. All right. They have lowered the difficulty of the normal mode hangman fight. So they greatly reduce the part HP of the charger, the object inside the mouth that you have to attack when it's when the hangman is frenzied. They've greatly reduced the damage of thunder wave, which is the wave of thunder emanating from the center of the map. They've greatly reduced the damage of the charging laser, the laser fired from the mouth when you fail to destroy the charger. Okay. They've decreased the damage of the thunderbolt skill and decreased the, dam the duration of the electric cannon which is the electric spheres that it fires at you, all right? They have lowered the difficulty of the Deception Transmitter Defense Mission in Sterile Land Rockfall. Not quite sure why they did that, but okay, fair enough. Like the Hangman change and the Dead Bride changes, I understand, but this one random mission, I don't know if anyone was struggling with that, but there you go. Um, knockdown damage will not occur in a row whenever you're damaged by traps. So from now on, if you're hit by a laser trap, you are not going to be knocked down constantly or ping-ponged around. That won't happen anymore. All right. Um, they've made monsters spawn faster in the extermination mission of the hard infiltration operation Echo Swamp Seed Vault and lowered the required amount for the collection mission. So uh, basically, you'll be able to run Seed Vault faster. The data collection mission of the hard infiltration operation Hagios the Old Mystery has been changed to a traversal mission instead. In the Invasion Legion of Immortality, the maximum distance for feeding artificial brains to the quantum computing unit has now been changed from 2 meters to 3.5 meters, basically doubling the range at which you can put the brains into the quantum computing unit, which stops some frustration because sometimes you would have to be like right there to actually do it. So this will help out. They've added sniper monsters to the Fortress Defense Line Void Fragment mission to prevent simple macros from being used. The escape menu can now be activated during the down but not out state, DBNO. And they've changed the aim assist settings for controllers. Uh, if this is relevant to you, then I would recommend reading it for yourself because I uh, I have no idea about controller. I, I keyboard and mouse all the way. The dev team is aware 
of the player feedback regarding aim assist and has improved the feature to further enhance the console player experience. Previously, the aim assist feature <clears throat> made delicate control difficult as aim automatically turns toward a nearby monster or focuses on the enemy's torso when you want to attack their weak points. With this improvement, players will now have more control over their aiming while new players are given appro more appropriate assistance. All right. Uh, aim assist basically reactivates faster when targeting multiple enemies in a row. And the minimum distance for camera auto-rotate to trigger has been changed to 4 meters or above. They've weakened the pull strength of the crosshair toward the center of the enemy and decreased the duration of aim assist when trying to target another monster. Hey, great. They've also added page 13 in the battle pass, so I will actually show this to you guys. Um, we're going to close this. Ha, I'm in game. So if we go to the battle pass right now, they have added page 13 which is all the way at the end down. Now you notice I haven't claimed my boosters because I have no need to claim them right now. Um, but basically, they've now added an extra crystallization catalyst and energy activator as a free reward. So you can claim both of these. This is on page 13 of the battle pass, okay? As long as you've completed the battle pass, you'll have access to this. Now, let, now that you've actually seen it, let's go back to the patch notes. So, it is just one act energy activator and one crystallization catalyst, but... Uh, the director's comment is that to meet the community's expectation for further improving the value of the Battle Pass rewards, they have temporarily added page 13 for the Season 1 Battle Pass while providing Crystallization Catalysts and Energy Activators as the rewards. Even if you have already reached Season Level 96, you can still receive the additional rewards on page 13. The dev team is working hard to incorporate feedback from the community to further improve the game and provide more value to players. Based on the feedback we received during the preseason, we have improved Season 1 Battle Pass to make it easier to achieve weekly and seasonal missions. We appreciate your continued interest in the Season 1 Battle Pass, along with the Battle <clears throat> battle Supply Shop, where you can receive free rewards. There you go. Okay. Now, here are some more buffs. Ultimate weapons have been buffed. Certain ones, okay? The Wave of Light Scout Rifle, they have re decreased the recoil of Solar Halo while increasing the firearm critical hit rate, and they've increased the duration of the effect depending on the enhancement level. Hitting enemies while Solar Halo is now active creates Dusk, inflicting Lunar Halo to enemies within the range. Firearm attack increases on hitting enemies inflicted with Lunar Halo. So there you go. Improved the base performance and unique ability of the ultimate weapon Kingsguard Lance Beam Rifle. They've increased the base fire rate of Kingsguard Lance while decreasing the base time it takes to charge. You can now place up to three Guardian Lances and the Lances automatically attack enemies within the damage range when placed. The damage interval of the Guardian Lance is now affected by the fire rate of Kingsguard Lance. Increased the duration of the Guardian Lance depending on the enhancement level. And they've increased the duration, increased the duration increase upon hit and damage range of the Guardian Lance with the maximum possible range Increase in range being limited. Okay. Ah, okay. I get what they mean. So they've increased the duration upon hit and the damage range of the Guardian Lance with the maximum possible increase in range being the limited stat. Okay. They have improved the base performance and unique ability of the Executor Shotgun. They've increased the base hip fire accuracy and aim shot accuracy of the Executor. When the Executor's Exaltation effect is active, failing to hit all fired bullets will no longer decrease the amount of stacks. Um... Decrease the maximum stacks of the exaltation effect and firing the gun at maximum stacks will no longer disable the ability. They've increased accuracy and firearm critical hit rate based on the adjusted maximum stacks of the executor's exaltation effect. Firearm critical hit damage and fire rate are also increased now. The executor's exaltation effect at maximum stacks now increases weak point damage instead of firearm attack. Firearm attack is no longer increased when hitting enemies inflicted with, inflicted with electrocution. Improve the base performance and unique ability of the unique weapon of the ultimate weapon Peacemaker. The single reload for Peace effect is now also granted when using a fusion skill. The skill cost of the single reload for Peace effect now decreases depending on the enhancement level. They've increased the non-attribute skill power per stack of the non-attribute skill power per stack of the single reload for Peace effect. Okay, cool. Um They've improved the base performance and unique ability of the ultimate weapon Excava. They've decreased the maximum stacks of voltage charge depending on the enhancement level in order to grant the energy grenade effect more quickly. They've increased additional damage for shooting while aiming with the energy grenade effect while aiming when the energy grenade effect is 
active depending on the enhancement level. They've slightly increased the projectile size of the energy grenade. And they've increased the electric resistance decrease of the voltage accumulation effect depending on the enhancement level. So Excava, they seem to have buffed things a little bit. I'm very excited to see this happen. Um, I do want to try it out and it's definitely something I'm going to work on as soon as I've got more crystallization catalysts. Okay. Now, they've made a change to the filter. Now, I'm going to try and go through this as best I can, but what I'm also going to tell you is that I will have a separate video on the filters again, and I promise to update them. Several of you came to me yesterday wondering if I would update the video on the filters. I said, yes, I will. So, I will do this uh, tomorrow if I can. I will try and get it done by tomorrow. You have my word on that. Okay. They've now changed it so that... Uh, well, the filter all is junk function has been retooled to the bulk exclude junk filter. Now it functions by specifying conditions for which ones you should not designate as junk. Basically, instead of a positive condition where you choose to designate certain items as junk, now it's like you don't designate these items as junk. All right? Um, think of it this way. They have flipped the filters around. So instead of rare, normal, ultimate, whatever, it's uh, basically normal or higher will be designated as junk, you know, or you can choose like, um, I actually genuinely don't know how this is going to operate properly because normal or higher, everything is higher than normal. So what are we supposed to do the do from here? should be what it should be this option and lower i don't know I'll, I'll try and figure this out because i don't understand this change at all or why they made the change this way because oh it oh because it's specifying which ones to not designate as junk ah so okay okay sorry my understanding was incorrect basically if i were to get like and i hope this explanation makes sense but if i were to select something like let's say i want skill cooldown rare or higher right then this would be excluded from the junk filter. So basically it would designate everything other than this as junk. Okay, I get it now. I will prepare the guide by tomorrow. I have, I understand it and I will retool my filters in game. But to show you a quick example, which I can do right now, um, let's, let's showcase a quick example. If I were to go here and bulk exclude junk filter, right? So enhanced reactors, I would exclude from uh, junking. All right, my reactor tiers, let's say I am looking for rare or higher reactors and I would probably exclude level 100 reactors. Okay, so level 100 reactors are the, are the more specific ones I want to exclude. We will use this option here and it will exclude if, it, if only one option is included or you can exclude if two or more are included. Therefore, if you have two of these roles on the same item, it'll work together. So let's say I want skill cooldown. Um, all the rest is excluded if it's ultimate or higher right but skill cooldown i want it either rare or higher skill duration rare or higher then uh non-attribute skill power boost i want it rare or higher um we can have something like that or chill skill boost rare or higher far enough right so let's say i want skill critical hit damage rare or higher i can include that um attack versus colossus I can have rare or higher again. So this basically makes all of this a lot easier to handle uh, depending on what you actually need. So you can have something like this going. Uh, the choice is really yours at the end of the day, what you want to do with something like this. But I think that this would be a much more helpful feature. Um, I, will, I will start working on this. I will loosely start working on this, but... Yeah, it will take some time. Okay, because non-attribute was not selected, right? Rare or higher. Oh, excluded if two or more are included. This one does not have two or more. This is why. If I were to change that to say excluded if only one is included, lie. Voila, it works. Okay, grand. Like I said, I will do a proper guide. Um, I'll do a proper guide on another day, but this explains a lot. Okay, got it.
understand though. I will do my filters up later. All right. Um, when it comes to the weapon filter, uh, I will show you guys how to set this up. So I'm just going to skip this section. They have made improvements so that players can move between the inventory and the map a bit more easily. Pressing the map button in the inventory menu allows you to enter the map screen and pressing the I button in the map menu allows you to enter the inventory screen. Um, if you were using the controls that you were using before, nothing has changed. So don't worry too much about this. It's just basically easier to enter from other screens. Okay, you can now bind hotkeys for the library, consumables, journal, social, battle pass, and shop menus in the game options if you'd like to. I'm probably not going to bind any keys for that because I'm used to the current system we have. You can now immediately choose a selectable reward before you begin hard infiltration operations. So if you guys haven't seen it yet, basically you can select reward one or reward two. I'll actually go through this in the game with you guys because uh, I I think it would just be easier if I show you. Uh, la, 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 la. Remember previously, like the party leader would choose the reward. I believe that this is no longer the well, the party leader in a friendly group should still be the one choosing the reward. But for those that uh, did not know the option existed, when you go here, you can now choose either reward one or reward two. So they've just basically made it clearer rather than have to click here and then select it, you can just choose this reward one, reward two. All right, so you can choose your Morphous accordingly based on whatever you need, which will just make it a lot easier for those that did not know that you could choose the Amorphous reward for the hard mode infiltration operations because I did not know that right at the start of the game. Okay, great. That's a small UI improvement. I don't mind it. You can now immediately choose a selectable reward before you begin hard infiltration operations. The weapon list in Customize now displays the status of skins for each weapon. At the library, the web the items obtained from research are also displayed in the acquisition info. You can also check two tips for amorphous materials now. Um, change firing mode in the gameplay settings is now enabled by default. Yes. Okay, so for those of you that didn't know, change firing mode exists. It's an option in the gameplay menu. I'll just quickly show you again. So this option is under gameplay. Okay, change firing mode. What it does is that for single shot and burst fire weapons, holding down the trigger will automatically cause it to fire. This applies to Nizestra's Devotion, um, Greg's Reverse Fate, etc, etc. Basically, this option was very useful so that we didn't have to click, 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 click. Alright, I have I enabled it as soon as it was in the game and I pretty much told everybody to enable it because it's, it's just great. It won't trigger things like a uh, sharp precision shot, so don't try and cheese it that way, but it's still useful. Okay? Alright, grand. Now, in terms of bug fixes, um, they've issued a fix where it automatically switched to the tracked items tab upon entering the research screen if there are completed or in progress research items. Okay, fixed an issue where the usage information button is not displayed for the two tips of certain common skins. Fixed an issue where entering a private battlefield as a party and leaving the party could turn the battlefield public. You are now sent to Albion the moment you leave your party on a private battlefield. Fixed an issue where trying to equip a module when the socket type is changed could incorrectly display accumulated applied values. LOL. Okay. Descendants and ultimate weapons. Fix an issue where the effect remains if Ajax barrier is immediately destroyed at the time it is created. When Haley uses the Zenith skill, it is now affected by the movement speed of her current weapon rather than her unique weapon. This allows the RK pacemaker effect of the inversion reinforcement to be properly applied. If the max HP of an ally healed by Eugen is less than one percent, is less than one, the amount of recovery is now calculated based on the target's max energy shield. They fixed an issue where the King's Guard Lance blocked enemies' projectiles. Okay. Cool. Miscellaneous. Fixed an issue where the Collect Ironheart Particles quest was not being completed upon being carried out. After the hotfix patch, the reward will be automatically applied upon re-login. Alright, there's another fix that is coming in Hotfix 1.13, so that you guys know about this. Basically, the Order of Truth mission where interacting with a drone before starting the battle with a named monster could end up completing the mission. This issue has not been fixed yet, it will be fixed in a later hotfix. They have fixed an issue in the Invasion Legion of Immortality mission where dying during the battle against a named monster could cause certain UI to not properly show up. They fixed an issue in the Agna Desert, the Asylum, normal infiltration operation where dying during the battle against a named monster could cause the door to not open. Okay, good to know. All right, that is pretty much settled for the patch notes. Now there's some other stuff that uh, people need to know about. They released a supplement today where they said that um, Hotfix 1.1 point two B has been applied. Um, basically, ultimate weapons can no longer be designated as junk. Ultimate weapons that are already designated as junk can have the junk designation deselected. 
and ultimate weapons are not to be dismantled. Okay, this is temporary. Why? Because uh, there are some accidental cases of dismantling ultimate weapons due to the new filter system, and to prevent such mistakes, they are temporarily fixing settings to not allow dismantling for ultimate weapons at all. And the official patch regarding such issues will be set in Hotfix 1.13. After Hotfix 1.13, ultimate weapons will automatically be registered as attached items, and we will make modifications to let ultimate weapons not be selected by the designated all as junk filter. For those who accidentally dismantled their ultimate weapon between the 1.12 update and the 1.12b update, they will restore the dismantled weapons via mail without anybody request, uh, needing to perform an additional request. So hopefully that will help you guys out if you accidentally dismantled your weapon. Don't panic. All right. This is here to help you. Next. There's an in-game event going on right now. All right. Once again, there are four challenges every day. Complete four regional missions, either normal or hard mode. You get 100,000 Kyber. Complete two void intercept battles, and you're going to get uh, 100,000 Kyber. If you complete one research, you're going to get 20 fine adjustment control axis. Yes, thank you. I'm looking for my perfect god rolls. And complete one infiltration operation will give you the five-hour descendant XP gain booster. So do look forward to this. There's also a 50% weapon proficiency boost that will be applied when defeating an enemy in infiltration operations, regardless of difficulty during the event period. Okay, uh, specific in event information can be found on game menu event tab. So take note that this event will last from the 12th to the 25th of September. Okay, so during this time, take advantage of the weapon proficiency boost in infiltration operations, especially those that are very dense with enemies. Yeah, you might want to take advantage of those because... They're going to be fun. Okay, good. Next. Choose your holiday greetings. Okay, I'm going to summarize this one for you, but basically there is not going to be a hotfix next week. Why? Because the dev team needs a break. They've been working nonstop since launch. All right. And I hope that everybody can wish them a very happy choose your holiday greetings. All right. It is basically a time for them to go back. I assume it's kind of like Chinese New Year for us Chinese. They're, they're going to go back and, you know, hang with their families, take some time to... Oh, re-energize recharge so please do wish them a good break all right and take note that there will be no hot fix next week all right they'll be doing the hot fixes and patches the week after all right and they've also stated in this entire notice if you guys want to read it that they are on track for the october 10th release all right you can expect them to get everything sorted out you know um the next bit of content for season one is coming october 10th there's there's no expected delays all right we hope you guys will enjoy this. Thank you very much for watching this video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to register me as your favorite content creator or extend your support if you haven't already or if you had registered like more than 1.5 months ago. Thank you very much again. All right. And I hope you guys will enjoy this hotfix. I know I'm going to be testing some of the changes tonight on stream. So do look forward to that. All right. I'll catch you on the next one. See you later.